everyone. My final video from last season seems like a prescient warning. Maybe it was. In his best-selling book, Blink, The Power of Thinking Without Thinking, Malcolm Gladwell explores thin slicing, which is essentially an intuitive capacity to instantly assess what needs doing and then doing it, the most interesting cases of which involve saving lives or avoiding disaster. Have a look at this lengthy piece in the context of the still unfolding weather disaster on the coast. The response to yesterday's post reminded me that I've never really explained why I'm doing this. Lock yourself down for a moment. I'll make this worthy of your time. And enough about making the bed. I'm leaving today, okay? For much of my 33-year career with Environment Canada, I was embedded in the emergency management community. My goal was, and is, to make weather information more consumable in the service of decision-making. There is a long-standing issue around weather coordination at Whistler. The issue attracts little attention and even less scrutiny, except for me. I've been trying, since the early 90s, to get the attention of Whistler regarding the quality coordination and presentation of weather here from a public safety perspective. I've engaged many locals, employees, and organizations professionally and personally at Whistler. In a playpen as big, varied, populated, and risk exposed as the S2S, critical decision makers accessing multiple sources of weather information is slightly problematic. Naturally, it won't matter until it does, and then it will really matter. That's what black swan weather events do. They blow all our conceptions about the outer limits of risk to smithereens. And it's always suddenly too late. Perhaps the biggest weather story of my career was the October 2003 tropical punch. You've probably forgotten it, not me. At 6 p.m. on October 17th, after soaking up 600 millimeters of rain, the Daisy Lake Dam reached red alert stage, meaning the reservoir was full and approaching free spill condition. Widespread flooding downstream was a certainty. The time before floodwaters reached the uppermost residences, about an hour, it was time to evacuate. And then, 18 months later, our one in 200 year storm happened again, literally destroying the ski season in January of 2005. The following groups or agencies are creating weather forecasts for the S2S. In the Alpine, Whistler Ski Patrol, Whistler Heli Skiing, Blackcomb Ski Patrol, Avalanche Canada, RWDI Consulting Engineers and Scientists, and yours truly, meteorologist David Jones. In the Valley, it's Environment Canada, the Weather Network, and WeatherNet, a private contractor that serves the contractors that keep the roads and mountain passes clear of snow in the winter. And that's not including the myriad providers of unvetted and completely automated and not connected to any warning system whatsoever, which is the holy grail of forecasting product from the likes of snowforecast.com and all the rest. I know some officials are using because I've asked them. Despite a revolution in every aspect of weather forecasting, to which the public is largely oblivious, and in communication technology, the same deterministic, static, and archaic, inadequate forecast formats appear on almost every weather menu, often served up by non-experts in local meteorology, communication, or even customer service. What business can afford not to consult a proper weather expert nowadays? But they don't. Why? Because most people's introduction and conception of weather comes from newscasts. And by now, you know, I-M-H-O, that's mostly just rubbish. The net result is that nearly no one has any idea of what is possible today in weather. We're going to change that. And by we, I mean all of us, because that's what it's going to take to tear down the walls and fill the bloody moat built by your friendly local newscasters. Perhaps now you understand my sarcasm and contempt for the climate emergency declarations in this part of the world and for the legacy media. And why my web icon and slogan mock the brainless activists that now somehow command even the smartest of people's attention. 
We're in a tragically stupid era where third-rate academics and QAnon are winning the battle for eyeballs, and where cynical, poisonous, critical theories are, in the words of James Lindsay and Helen Pluckrose, two experts on the subject, ruining everything. There's no bloody climate emergency in the S2S. That's just Orwellian. Coastal BC is adjacent the biggest climate stabilizer on the planet, the Pacific Ocean. Climate change is a slow rolling train wreck for which there are no solutions, only trade-offs, as Thomas Sowell would say. And as the economists are trying to tell us if we'd only listen, there are more immediate risks that deserve our attention. I happen to think weather in the sea to sky is one of them. So go ahead, be my guest, and tell me why I'm wrong about any of this. Cheers, and enjoy the rest of the day.